Hello, my name is Simone Schüller-Finke and I'm an assistant professor at the Health Science and Technology Department where I'm heading the Responsive Biomedical Systems Lab. My background is in mechanical engineering and microrobotics and my team and I develop robots at the micro and nano scale with the aim to tackle a range of challenging problems in healthcare. Basically, my vision is to engineer tiny robots that can roam through the body to detect and treat diseases. Microrobots actually don't look like these shrink tinny machines or these visualizations of scaled down robots that you find when you Google microrobot. But similar to their large counterparts, they actually do follow a core principle of robotics. And that is that upon a certain input queue, a processing rule is applied that leads to a distinct output signal. This input signal can now be a signal of the disease, such an enzymatic activity that is correlated to an inflammation or it could also be an external signal that we can generate to communicate and control these microrobots, such as magnetic energy or acoustic energy. Using nanotechnology and different chemical and physical synthesis processes, we basically engineer these microrobots that they can react to these input signals. And this is one intersection where artificial intelligence can come in. Let's say we want to design a microrobot that can measure the activity of enzymes, in particular proteases. We have over 500 proteases in the human body, and they are key regulators of many healthy processes. Their dysregulation is associated with numerous ailments, ranging from cancer over inflammation to cardiovascular diseases. We are in particular interested in proteolytic activity related to rheumatoid arthritis and means to detect such dysregulation early on or to help monitor during therapy with our robots. So for example, we designed one microrobot that is based on a gas-filled lipid microbubble. We cross-linked the shell with a peptide that restrains its oscillation when exposed to ultrasound. Now when a certain target protease comes and cleaves this peptide, we basically restore this oscillation and receive a strong nonlinear backscattering signal. Another microrobot is based on a magnetic microcluster that is held together by peptide bonds. Now, upon exposure to a certain target protease, this cluster falls apart, which changes its dynamic magnetic response, and we can detect the signal inductively. So basically, a certain protease can cleave a peptide with quite high specificity. Unfortunately, different proteases can have, though, quite overlapping specificity patterns, and it becomes very difficult to find a certain peptide that can profile an individual protease effectively, especially in a complex background such as the human body or also ex vivo in patient samples. So let's think about the combinatorial design space we have for certain peptide candidates. So we have 20 amino acids, and if we would like to design an octapeptide, we basically have roughly 10 to the power of eight possibilities. Now, if we would like to distinguish certain quite related proteases, it can be helpful to integrate specific um, positional requirements and we can do so by including unnatural amino acids. We have about 100 of these at hand, not all of them qualify, but a good portion and this expands the combinatorial space by many, many orders of magnitude. Another challenge is that protease patterns can be hard to integrate as a diagnostic readout because several proteases can jointly contribute and generate similar patterns. To tackle this, we basically need to find smart combinations of peptides that each have distinct cleavage rates and can help us to generate a specific readout in complex backgrounds. So let me name three concrete examples of how artificial intelligence could help. As a first step, to identify a certain target protease as a diagnostic input signal for a disease, we could include natural language processing to screen information in existing databases. We could also use NLP to search for joint appearances of certain peptide sequences and proteases to narrow down the search for good candidates. Secondly, we could employ machine learning strategies to find protease patterns in proteomic screens from patient samples and help us to find targets and also support diagnostic readout. This could also help us to find combinations of protease patterns for the strongest predictive power in a complex background. So for example, in rheumatoid arthritis, 
we don't have just a single protease that's upregulated as a sign of that disease. There are several proteases active in concert and figuring out which group is most determining could be um, a problem for machine learning. And lastly, I believe we could also use machine learning strategies to help find us these best combinations of peptides to enhance specificity for a certain target proteases that I mentioned before. Because compared to um, most existing ex vivo probes to detect proteases, our robots can actually multiplex by incorporating several peptide sequences and enhance the specificity and include actually also logical gates. This would, for example, for our microbubble mean that we have several different peptide sequences integrated in the shell. So currently we mine these target proteases manually from literature and we developed a strategy and a pipeline to um, generate suitable peptide candidates and then we test them experimentally. But clearly artificial intelligence could help us here tremendously and make a major leap forward to unleash the potential of proteases, not only for our micro robots, but for um, more personalized medicine in general. So once we know that some processes are off in the human body, we need to find ways to better deliver drugs more targeted to a disease site and also lower the systemic burden. Here, I also believe that micro robots can come in to help. And actually in my lab, we develop both synthetic and living micro robots for more enhanced drug delivery. And um, this unfortunately goes beyond today's spotlight, but I would be happy to talk more about this in detail at any time. I hope that we will find a sparing partner in the AI Center to help us tackle this challenge of this multidisciplinary endeavor, because clearly micro robots are a result of the convergence of sciences. My vision for the next 10 to 20 years is that such micro and nano robots become ubiquitous tools to make medicine more preemptive, targeted and personalized. Coupled to readout strategies such as ultrasound, we currently aim to build up and leverage existing low-cost infrastructure. Regarding our new instrumentation for magnetic readout and control, we set a strong focus on low power consumption and scalability. Further out, we might even employ micro-robots from the comforts of our home to monitor our health. This could be as a supplement to our morning juice and we get a readout by breathing into a special mirror or by integrated sensors in the toilet. Basically, I envision a future where micro and nano robots will be seamlessly integrated into our daily lives and help us to realize preemptive, sustainable and truly personalized medicine. I also believe that artificial intelligence will be an integral part towards this future. <laughs>